Hey everyone, welcome back to Biology Lab. Today we're gonna to be learning all about enzymes. This experiment is gonna be spudtacular, so I hope you're ready. Uh, today, the specific enzyme we're gonna be talking about is catalase. Catalase is a very important enzyme for our bodies, specifically because its main job is to break up hydrogen peroxide, which is harmful for us, into water and oxygen, which is safe for us. So it plays an important role in making sure that our body is not harmed by external factors. Now you may be thinking, well that's not really important because I don't drink hydrogen peroxide. Well think again because inside of you lives billions and billions of bacteria. And these bacteria, some of them have a byproduct of hydrogen peroxide. You better believe it, there's some hydrogen peroxide inside of you and catalase is doing its job breaking it apart. Just like any other enzyme, catalase needs an optimal environment to perform at its best. So things such as temperature, pH, surface area, amount of catalase, amount of substrate, all of these things affect how well it can perform. So today we're gonna to be looking at different factors that affect the reaction rate of catalase when it reacts with hydrogen peroxide. So, Let's go ahead and pose our question for the day. The question is, how does changing various factors affect the reaction rate between catalase and hydrogen peroxide? Today, the three factors we're gonna look at are temperature, pH, and surface area. So take a moment uh, to go ahead and grab your materials. I have mine in front of me. You're going to need potatoes. That is going to act as our catalase and Potatoes are really good because they have a lot of catalase in them. There are other ingredients as well. Uh, if you can't find a potato, carrots work well, uh, bananas can even do the trick, but we're gonna use potato for today. We're gonna go ahead and prep the potatoes during the experiment, so you'll want to have ice available and boiling water available. So go ahead and take a second, look at your materials, and I'll see you in a minute. After you've written down your test question, go ahead and take a second and write down a hypothesis for what you believe will happen if we change the temperature, the pH level, and the surface area for the potato. So let's go ahead and begin. The first variable we're gonna change is temperature, but before we even start that, we're gonna need a control group. So you'll want to prepare one control group and label it so that way you know this is the base, this is what you should expect to see in a normal reaction under normal temperatures and under normal pH levels um, with the regular sized potato. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my post-it and I'm going to label this one my control. Move these over to the side. Now I've pre-cut my potatoes, but what you'll want to do is cut your potatoes small enough that they'll fit into your glass jar, but they should be in equal sizes. So make sure your potato sizes are all about the same uh, width and length. So once you have that, you're going to go ahead and make sure you have your hydrogen peroxide. And we're going to take one potato piece, place it inside your cup, and then you're gonna pour enough hydrogen peroxide so that it covers your potato completely. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over so you can see how much that is. So you'll wanna do this fairly quickly because your reaction will start right away. And as you can see, there's some bubbles forming. And you can see inside that there are some bubbles around the potato wedge, and they're growing in volume. So you wanna wait maybe about two to three minutes for the reaction to fully occur, and then you're going to go ahead and measure the height of your bubbles. So if you remember, I'll take a moment here to remind you, the reaction between the hydrogen and the catalase 
is two hydrogens mixed with uh, catalase equals water and oxygen. Oxygen is released in the form of bubbles. So that is what you're seeing here. You know the reaction is working because the oxygen is being released. And the liquid here, don't try to drink it, but it should be turning into water. <laughs> All right, so it's been about a couple of minutes. So we just finished waiting three to five minutes for the bubbles to rise. This is the oxygen product that came out of our reaction. And we measured it to be about three quarters of a centimeter. And this is our control group. So essentially under normal temperature, normal size of potato and normal pH temperatures, this should be your results. So I've just finished doing my control. I'm going to go ahead and set up to test the different temperatures and how it affects the rate. So I'm gonna need three cups for this part of the experiment. We're gonna measure what happens if the catalase, the potato, is in ice, if it's room temperature, and if it's boiled, how it affects the rate. So in front of me, I've gone ahead and placed a wedge in ice water. You can go ahead and place it for about 10 minutes at home. That should do the trick. And I have one boiled potato. Now remember, all your potato wedges should still be the same size, so you do not alter anything but the temperature. I'm gonna go ahead and add my hydrogen peroxide into each of my cups. Now remember, you just need enough so that your potato is submerged. They should be approximately the same. There we go. Before we start, we need to label each of our glasses to make sure we know which one is which. So the first one is room temperature. And this one, you should expect similar results to your control group because it will be the same temperature, the same size, everything will be the same. The next one will be boiled. That will be the potato that you boiled. And the last one will be your frozen potato. And that one is the potato in ice. So I'm gonna take each of my potatoes, here's my room temperature, and I'm gonna place it into the solution. Now remember, you wanna have it as submerged as possible. There's my boiled potato, and here is me digging for my frozen potato. All right, and now we wait for three to five minutes. See what we get. All right, so a few minutes have passed. Let's take a look at our results. So let's start with room temperature. As you can see, my reaction here is pretty close to the control group. I'm gonna spin it around so you can kind of see how many bubbles formed all around. I'm gonna go ahead and measure the amount of bubbles where I see them most and I got almost the same just shy of one centimeter so I would say that's 0.9 centimeters and this information you want to jot down in the table in your lab report in the boiled I don't even need my ruler because as you can see there are no bubbles at all nothing nothing occurred in this reaction so let's move on to frozen. So there are some bubbles here. I'm gonna turn it around so you can kind of see throughout the glass. There are some, but not as many as room temperature. I'm gonna go ahead and take the measurement where I see them the most. And I'm getting about half a centimeter. So you can see there are less here. So why did this happen? Well, if you think about it, when you're boiling the potato, you're boiling the catalase. Catalase is an enzyme. Enzymes are highly affected by temperature. If you remember, the higher the temperature, up to a certain point, they may function at a rapid rate. 
but once they reach a cap temperature, they're going to denature. So those enzymes, those proteins are going to break apart and they're going to denature and they won't be able to be effective. So this is why the reaction didn't occur. There was no catalase. In the frozen, you can see some bubbles, but not as many. So why, why did that happen? Well, if you think about it, freezing anything slows it down. So the cold temperature is slowing down the rate of the reaction. So there are not as many bubbles because the reaction is much slower than if it were at room temperature. So our results and our data do make sense and matches what we've learned, which is great. If they don't, go back and take a look as to why your results did not match up to these. Maybe there was a human error and you can try again. Maybe it wasn't cold enough. Maybe your, your potato wasn't boiled all the way through and so there was some catalase still in there and you got bubbles. All right, on to the next part. So I'm gonna move my temperature ones to the side. If you're only using three glasses like I am, you're gonna have to empty them out and then clean them and then uh, have new ones. Let's go ahead and go to the next part. For this section, we're gonna go ahead and see how pH affects the rate of the reaction. We're gonna use vinegar as our acid. And right here, you can see on my left side, I have a big jar of vinegar. You can find this usually at home. If you don't have it, you can find it at your grocery store. And this is going to be our acid. So we're gonna see how acid affects the catalase in its reaction of creating water and oxygen from hydrogen peroxide. So we're gonna have the same steps. You're going to pour just enough hydrogen peroxide to submerge your potato. So what you wanna do with the vinegar, which I've done ahead of time, is place about half a cup of vinegar in a separate cup and place your potato in here for about 10 minutes. That way it's fully submerged in the vinegar and the vinegar has enough time to integrate into the potato. So since I've already done this part, I'm gonna go ahead and take my potato and add it into my hydrogen peroxide cup. You can swirl it around to help the reaction rate get started. But as you can see, there are no bubbles starting to form. So I'll turn my glass around so you can see. There are no bubbles whatsoever. And so there was no reaction. Nothing happened. And so we can safely conclude that acid, just like the temperature, just like heat, denatured the catalase. And so the catalase could not effectively break down the hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. So what we learned is catalase needs room temperature, a non-acidic environment to fully take effect. All right. So let's move on to part three and see how surface area affects the rate of reaction. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this to the side. I'm gonna pour this out and rinse out my cup and get ready for part three. All right, we're ready for part three. I've got my three clean glasses and I'm gonna go ahead and pour my hydrogen peroxide once again. Remember to keep it as even as possible. And that's the end of my hydrogen peroxide. Okay, so here we're gonna measure the surface area. So here you wanna make sure you have a normal potato wedge that you've been using, the same size you've been using in the other parts of this experiment, a slightly larger potato wedge, and then some that are cut up into small pieces. So I have my regular normal sized potato in here, and I've got my large potato in here. There's no specific size to your large one as long as it's bigger than the normal, it's perfectly fine. And then I've got my small little pieces in this cup. So, question, which potato has the most surface area do you think? 
If you guessed the small pieces, you're absolutely right. If you think about it, the smaller the size, the more surface area is around each one, increasing the total surface area. In the large potato, you only have the size of that one piece. So it's essentially going to be smaller. And the normal potato is going to be somewhere in between. So let's see how that affects the rate of reaction. Does it need more surface area to improve its rate? And your normal potato should have somewhere in between. Before we start, let's go ahead and label our glasses. I've got normal. Small for small pieces. And my large piece. So I'm going to put my normal size first, my small potatoes in the second, and my large potato at the end. Ooh, splash zone here. And you can swirl it around to help get the reaction started. And again, give it a couple minutes, although I don't even know if we need that because it's very clear already to see which ones have the, have the most bubbles. If you can notice, the small potatoes are in the lead. Our normal has a fair amount, and the large seems to have the least. So let's measure them to make sure we have accurate data. For my first normal potato wedge, we have about a half a centimeter. For the small potatoes, ooh, about one and a quarter centimeters. And for the large, we have about a little less than half. So I would say maybe 0.5. Now I see the large is still bubbling. So what happened here? So essentially the normal gave our normal results. The small gave a lot more bubbles, so there was definitely more reaction occurring here. So surface area definitely plays a role in how fast this reaction can occur. The more surface area, the faster and more of the reaction that takes place. In the large, now the large may have a few varying effects. So if you got less, like mine, too small of a surface area, which means it didn't have enough catalase to react with the hydrogen peroxide. If you got more bubbles for any reason, that may be due to the chance that increasing the size with how much hydrogen peroxide you have could reversely affect that. So your large may have different results and some of the reasons why would be the amount of substrate catalase that you have with the amount of hydrogen peroxide. They may vary depending on your size of the potato. Um, if you wanna go ahead and extend this experiment at home, go ahead and try to add more hydrogen peroxide and see how that affects your rate. Try to add more catalase and see how that might affect the rate of reaction. If you wanna keep going and extending further because this is a really cool experiment, try carrots as mentioned before, try bananas, try different items that you may find in your house that already have catalase in them. You'd be surprised how many there are and see how that affects it, how much catalase is in each and maybe why. Don't forget to add these extensions into your lab report um, at the end of your lab.